That's exactly right. We added educational attainment, uh, which had not been looked at before, one. And second, we used data from 2008. There's a four-year lag between that public use data of when it's created and when you get it. And so we, we extended it to the most recent data and included the additional variable educational attainment. Within any race, as you move up the ladder of education, you see increased longevity. And so there are disparities within race between the least educated and the most educated for all races that we looked at. Well, all I can say is that the gap is increasing every year to the point where it's becoming quite sizable. And that's why, in the paper anyway, we refer to two Americas. We're seeing a splitting of America into those who have high longevity and those who have reduced lower longevity. And, importantly, being driven not just by race but by educational attainment. If you look at black women today with uh, less than a high school education, they have the life expectancy of women in Jamaica. If you look at um, black men with less than a high school education, they have the life expectancy of men in Fiji. The only way we are going to make progress in bringing the two Americas back together is through, a, I believe anyway, a combination of some sort of social policies that have eluded us to date, but they are to uh, increase educational opportunities for everyone and to decrease poverty. There's a lot of mortality that's avoidable. You know, drug use is avoidable. Eating right is something that we could all do. Ways of reducing that mortality so that everybody does get into that longevity boat together. And clearly we believe that uh, education is a component of it. There's no question that poverty is a component of it. And diminishing those two things alone would produce huge advantages for what are now disadvantaged populations. It's a chicken and an egg problem, right? And that is, if you live in an area of extreme poverty, you're probably afraid to even walk down the street to get to your schoolhouse. And so you have to create an environment that where a seed of education can grow. Hispanics actually had higher life expectancies than, uh, than the non-Hispanic whites. Um, but what complicates that issue is a lot of the recent immigrants um, are of the higher uh, economic stratum of their own countries. So they are healthier uh, when they leave that country, and they are healthier than subsequent Hispanics who have been here for a generation or two. So there's that gap. There's another issue, and that is a lot of deaths in the Hispanic community could be lost because people go back to their home country to die. Uh, so those issues put question marks about how the Hispanic results would play out if we had all of the data in hand.
Um, the variation, the spread between life expectancies among the most disadvantaged group is pretty broad. And then you go up to the next level of education, the next level, and the final level, it narrows. And so it says education is a leveler of the longevity disparity. Not complete, because gaps remain, but also they're trending in the right direction. So in the future, hopefully, at least among the highest groups of education, there will no longer be racial gaps.